Hello and welcome back to Live Label Free. In this video, you will learn how to recognize and overcome extreme hunger as an autistic person. In case you are new here, my name is Olivia and I am a proud autistic entrepreneur that is fully recovered from an eating disorder and now inspires others to do the same. Extreme hunger is such a terrifying part of the recovery process and can be especially confusing if you are also autistic. There's honestly not enough information out there about extreme hunger, let alone the overlap between autism and eating disorders. That's why I've decided to create this video to bring together the topic of extreme hunger in eating disorder recovery as well as honoring hunger cues as an autistic individual so you can finally stop obsessing over food and exercise and focus on living your life instead. Before we dive in, I want to share my completely free guide with you that answers the top 10 most frequently asked questions about extreme hunger. Get the guide delivered straight to your inbox by clicking the link in the description below or heading over to livelabelfree.com forward slash extreme dash hunger dash guide. I explain what extreme hunger is, the difference between extreme hunger and binge eating disorder, what to do when you're physically full but still thinking about food, and so much more. So go grab your free guide, sit back, relax, and let's get into this week's episode. Welcome to Live Label Free, the podcast, where you'll learn to let go of limiting labels and embrace your unique brain. As my mom says so beautifully in her song, Fear is a heavy load to carry. which is why on this podcast, you'll learn the scientific links between neurodiversity and eating disorders, giving you a deeper understanding of how you can face your fears and become truly free. Together, you and me, we will keep putting one foot front of the other autism and extreme hunger man we have a lot to unpack today first of all let's start with the basics and that is autism and hunger we'll get to the extreme part in a bit as an autistic person myself i know that Physical hunger is not something that always comes naturally to us neurodivergent individuals. This is because the majority of autistic people struggle with interoception. I explain exactly what interoception is and go into depth about its role in autism and anorexia in my episode, Interoception in Autism and Anorexia, so feel free to press pause on this episode and catch up on that one if you are hearing the word interoception for the first time and are just thinking, what the heck, what even is this whole interoception thing? But in short, interoception is the sense through which we monitor the inner state of our bodies. Interoception tells you to use the bathroom when your bladder is full and to get a snack when you are hungry. But what happens when you lack interoceptive awareness, a very common trait among people with autism and anorexia? You are unable to recognize these inner cues, physical hunger being one of them. I believe this lack of interoceptive awareness is what triggered my own eating disorder at the young age of 11 because I remember simply not being hungry. This is also an age of becoming more independent and getting to make more of your own food choices, which I believe helps explain why so many people who do develop an eating disorder develop it around the start of puberty. Not to mention, it was also during this time that I started to learn about nutrition in school. My autistic brain took health recommendation statements very literally, and food and exercise became my newest obsession. 
This, of course, is a whole separate topic, which I will save for another video. But basically, what I'm saying here is that people who lack interoceptive awareness are more likely to feel confused about hunger cues. So when you are confused about your body's cues and don't eat enough because you're simply not hungry, your body starts believing resources are scarce and will go into energy deficit. It's this energy deficit that can spark anorexia genetics in people who are predisposed to the illness, which again, I believe is a huge contributing factor to the common co-occurrence of autism and anorexia. When you are in energy deficit, your body must start to economize. Because there is not enough energy coming in, your body will have to slow down and eventually stop certain processes that are non-essential to life. Your heart rate slows, your digestion gets messed up, you are more sensitive to the cold, and your hair and nails get brittle. If you're a female, your menstrual cycle will cease because why the heck would your body waste energy on a period if it could use that precious energy to keep your heart beating? All of these adjustments are made by the body in an effort to maximize your chances of survival. Of course, there's only so much energy conservation your body can do before it must turn to internal sources for fuel. In order to support your daily activities, not to mention the excessive exercise most people with comorbid autism and anorexia engage in, your body will literally start eating itself up. Your organs shrink, your bone density decreases, and blood flow to the brain is reduced, which, if you did listen to my episode on interoception in autism and anorexia, contributes to further deterioration of interoceptive awareness. I do want to clarify here that a lack of interoceptive awareness alone does not automatically equate to lack of physical hunger cues. You may still have tummy rumbles or feel fatigued or dizzy if you need to eat, but someone who struggles with interoception may struggle in connecting these physical cues with the action of actually eating. Autistic people can often go for hours without food because they are simply unaware of needing to eat, which is why extreme hunger at night may be a common occurrence among autistic individuals. When you've almost gone a whole day without food or very little food and then finally allow yourself to eat something later in the day, your body realizes, oh damn, I actually am really hungry and you may binge. This does not make you an emotional eater or a binge eater. You simply have so many calories to make up for. Are you desperate to overcome extreme hunger but don't know where to start? Perhaps you feel you need a step-by-step -step guide teaching you how to deal with mental hunger, weight gain, digestive issues, and everything else that comes with recovery? If so, you are in the right place because my course, Extremely Hungry to Completely Satisfied, is here. Extremely Hungry to Completely Satisfied is the world's very first course designed specifically for those who are committed to overcoming extreme hunger and finding true satisfaction. It combines scientific research and insight from years of personal experience to provide tangible action steps towards a life of freedom. Full of video presentations, lessons, worksheets, and scientific resources, Extremely Hungry to Completely Satisfied is the comprehensive framework that teaches you how to not only beat extreme hunger, but how to pave your unique path towards a fully recovered life. It's the all-in-one resource I wish I had during one of the scariest periods of my life, taking a holistic approach to recovery and empowering you to finally break free from any and all limiting beliefs that are holding you back. The very first step to achieving anything is to believe you can achieve the thing. And I, my friend, 
wholeheartedly believe that my course is exactly what you need to achieve a life of abundance. Over the course of just eight weeks, you'll learn to shift your mindset in every way possible. You'll be taking data-driven action, and I'll be guiding you every step of the way so you can fully recover from disordered eating and not just have to manage an eating disorder for the rest of your life. Enroll in my course today by clicking the link in the description below or visiting livelabelfree.com forward slash extreme dash hunger dash course that's live label free like the name of this podcast dot com forward slash extreme dash hunger dash course i am so excited for you to finally find freedom from a life that revolves around food because your life is worth so much more now let's get back to the episode That example about binging at night due to restriction during the day is an excellent illustration of how restricted food intake can lead to extreme hunger in the short term. So then, what happens when you develop a full-blown eating disorder as an autistic individual and restrict calories for weeks, months, years, maybe even decades? Your energy deficit turns into energy debt. Now, Energy debt is a lot like financial debt in the sense that you eventually need to pay it back. Say you take out a loan from the bank to buy a house. You buy the house and you're very happy, but you're also now stuck with a mortgage. You have an agreement with the bank to fully pay back whatever they lent you to buy the house, but you also have to pay the bank a little extra each month for lending you the money in the first place. That's of course how banks make money. Well, the same goes for full recovery from an eating disorder. Because your body has been taking energy from precious organs and has had to make trade-offs between proper bodily functioning and fueling your day-to-day activities, your body is now in energy debt. In order to pay your organs back and replenish your body to function optimally again, you need to eat a lot of food. Not only do you have to eat a sufficient amount of food to support your daily life, but you have to eat extra food to pay back all the energy you took from places where energy should have never been taken from in the first place. Another way your body conserves energy while it is in energy deficit is by shutting off physical hunger cues. When your body believes you are in a famine environment and does not trust that food is abundant, it's not going to waste precious energy on sending out stomach rumbles like it would in a person who is in energy balance. Every single action in the body costs energy, and your body will only send out physical hunger cues if it trusts that doing so will result in a return on investment. In people who have difficulty recognizing internal cues in the first place, a complete absence of physical hunger cues can make it seem even more impossible to eat intuitively. Now, you may be thinking, so if you're telling me I am unable to recognize, let alone experience, hunger cues in the first place, how can any of this be related to extreme hunger? Well, here is where things get interesting, because extreme hunger will often manifest itself in a way that is drastically different than what you may think. A huge misconception about extreme hunger is that it is simply this bottomless pit physical hunger that so many YouTubers and Instagram recovery accounts describe. The apparent inability to feel physically satiated can be a way in which one experiences extreme hunger, but as we just learned, people with autism and anorexia aren't always as aware of what it means to feel physically hungry or full. So how does an autistic person in recovery recognize extreme hunger or hunger at all? You recognize your need for food by observing your mental hunger. 
A huge part of the work I do with my autistic clients doing one-on-one coaching is discovering ways in which you can use your autistic traits to your advantage to recover from your eating disorder. I constantly get asked whether or not it's harder or even possible at all for an autistic person to recover from an eating disorder because so many of the autistic traits are the root cause of the disordered eating behaviors. This may be true, but the way you allow it to impact your life as a whole depends on how you choose to use those traits. Your obsession for following a certain food or exercise routine can be used as an excuse to stay stuck in your eating disorder, but this same obsessive trait can be used in recovery to commit to eating more food and following a rigid rest routine. It's this obsessive thinking around food and exercise that is the telltale sign you have extreme hunger. Our bodies are so incredibly smart and are constantly navigating and adjusting to find ways to maximize your chances of survival. If your body is trying to conserve energy by shutting off physical hunger cues, it will prompt you to seek out food in other ways. And what is the most cost-effective way to signal interest in food besides a physical urging? thinking about food. All the planning, dreaming, and creating of potential meals and how they will fit into your day, that is all mental hunger. All of the obsessive exercise you're engaging in, also mental hunger. Your rigid exercise routine is a way in which you are trying to remain in control of your body's energetic balance and thus act as a justification for the precisely planned food. So if you're watching this video right now or listening to the podcast and you're simultaneously speculating what your next meal or workout is going to be, this is your sign to go into the kitchen and eat. Use your autistic trait of a need for routine to create a consistent eating plan. Use your autistic trait of a preference for predictability to plan your fear foods. Use your autistic trait of being detail-oriented to visualize every detail of your fully recovered life and then take action to live that life because a fully recovered life is 100% possible for you, my fellow autistic friend, but only if you're willing to work for it. And that is all I have for you today. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a huge thumbs up if you are watching on YouTube and hit that subscribe button wherever you are watching or listening. I love you, I appreciate you, and I'll talk to you soon. Just one foot in front of the other And you'll see around the corner soon This podcast has been recorded by your host, Liv. This podcast has been edited by my small but mighty Live Label Free team. And the beautiful song, One Foot in Front of the Other, that you are now listening to was written and recorded by my beautiful mom, Louise Alexandra. I am so grateful for my team and everyone who supports Live Label Free. Together, we are always stronger.